Today, I'm going to be walking you through how I managed to get Hydra to let me debug a Wine executable on a Linux host. Okay, that feels like it's something that should work, but it doesn't quite work as well as, as we'd really like. And I, I got sent down this path because there's an individual out there um, who said, hey, a Wine dev here. Using Ghidra and Wine DBG, something that I do quite often for Wine development. Super cool to see someone use those purposes. And so if you follow this link, um, come to this page where they were actually doing, uh, they were they were doing reverse engineering. It's a very good read on some abandoned, uh, abandoned ware firm and software licensing challenges. Really nice walkthrough on Ghidra. Um, there's some other usages of tools. Uh, but what mostly came across here that I was running into was that they got the software running on Wine, which comes with its own debugger, has GDB integration, have a debugger that integrates with Hydra, but it doesn't really play well with Wine or Wine B. Um, so they were using it manually. So that really didn't help me figure out what I wanted to do, which was I wanted to be able to use all the niceties that are in Hydra debugger and then be able to do that while I'm looking at an executable that I'm running via Wine. Um, there's lots of nice things in there, like the modules getting loaded at the right spot. You can see if you have other kernel DLLs, or you start basically importing and putting these things into place, you really see how code is actually flowing within uh, a target binary that you're looking at. And so um, really nice that they have this right down here. It's like you know, how you would start. So what we what I started with was exactly that. This is my test program. It's really just a, a simple ELF program uh, that basically has, again, it just has a little tiny buffer overflow in it for the, the sake of maybe we'll get to the point of actually debugging something far enough we can see a good crash inside of Ghidra. Um, we'd really like to get to the point of being able to say, I want to debug this with GDB. So if I did this in wine dbg um, with test exe.64, right? And I give it the arguments to be four. It will run, it'll bring up our little terminal over here. And wine dbg is not a really super full featured thing. Um, break at main on this one. And continue to main. Actually, W main. I think win main. Well, either way, it runs. It does what we needed to do. Moves along fast enough. Because we really don't want to spend our time in here. We'd rather spend our time in GDP. So what I really wanted was how do I go back and I want to debug in in GDB and no start. So I got I got this GDB no start. And this is kind of what I really wanted almost. It gives you the ability to start GDB up as a server, and then you can use another GDB session to connect to it. That's where I said, aha, I can go use Hydra to connect to that session, but not really. Um, and part of that is because if you dig through enough of the archives of, of things going all the way back to 2005, um, you'll find out that GDB on your local system, even if you have the multi arch or something else in place, you don't necessarily have what's there to be able to debug and run through the PE files. Of um, but fortunately, someone on Stack Overflow had left because I couldn't find the packages. What I knew I wanted to do was I wanted to run the GDB server within Wine and then connect to my program and then connect that uh, to Ghidra. So somebody had finally like asked a similar question um, without the Ghidra component, uh, but their answer isn't quite the answer that I was looking for. I'm actually looking for the answer that's at the top but not the top rated one here. Uh, and that gives me these installation targets uh, that actually give me my GDB server, which I need to be able to run and host my program so GDB can talk to it. And then the other tool, which is a way to connect to that. Um, so basically a version of GDB that understands how to debug PE directly. 
Uh, and so what we'll do is actually take those pieces and combine them together and then try to glue that in with Ghidra and make it work. All right, so this is going to be, I think, my second or third time trying this um, because I kept screwing up the process. So I'm really sorry for that. Um, but so what we're going to do here is we're going to do exactly what we said. We're going to basically take wine. We're going to use wine to run a GDB server in wine. We're going to export that on our local host of 12345, and then we're going to execute our actual wine program with a couple of arguments that go with it. So before we do that, we're actually going to come over here to Ghidra. I've already preloaded the image in. And uh, instead of opening it with the code browser, we're going to open it with the debugger this time. When we open it with the debugger, we will open with the debugger. Waiting, we're waiting. Hooray! Program's open with the debugger. Um, we're going to go uh, start with um, going to main just so that we have a good place so that we kind of have a reference for where we are in the program. Um, decompiler shows that we're still running the program that we saw basically over here in our cat output. Um, very simple program just to kind of prove our purposes. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in and add a debug target. So when we add a debug target, what we're looking for is the NVM GNU GDB local debugger. And we want that because that allows us to specify a specific version of GDB. Normally this is populated with user bin GDB, but in this case, we wanna actually use the x86, x64, w64, mingw GDB um, that was referenced in that Stack Overflow article. And then additionally, because I use um, Jeff for a lot of my GDB purposes, uh, we're going to pass in a couple of other flags that tell GDB to ignore its uh, initialization file and also to ignore any initialization directories. That'll make it so that Ghidra doesn't choke on any of the sort of colorized output and terminal codes that come back from Jeff. Anyway. So we'll do that. We'll connect to it. Um, we now have a debugger target. We haven't really done anything other than set up the debugger target, which basically just gets GDB to spawn in the background. And so, for example, if we ask GDB about the file, there's no file loaded at this point in time. So to start that off, we're going to call file. And then mine is in min gw test and then test six, uh, exe dot six four. So that'll load the file. So now if we ask for an info on that file, um, we'll get details back about that file, where text is loaded, where data is loaded, all that other fun stuff uh, that we would expect to normally see. And now at this point, we should be mostly ready to start debugging. We got to come back here to our uh, to our terminal. We actually have to start uh, the Wine GDB server. So now GDB is started. It's listening on port one two three four five for us, and we will say that we would like to do a target uh, extended remote. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five. And so the reason we want to do extended is so far, every time I've done this, it requires generally restarting the program numerous times. Um, and that, I'm not certain why that is. I think it just happens to be something with the way that, um, way that everything is getting connected, where we're kind of breaking in it when we're stopping the program. So when you do an extended remote, that gives you the opportunity to keep sort of restarting the target, disconnect, et cetera, if you need. So we'll do that. We'll start it up. We'll basically break into the system. Um, we'll notice that we didn't get, we got several errors back from GDB. And the reason is because uh, what happened here, if you kind of look through this, is that when it asked GDB to do a trace, um, it gave it the wrong information. And so the way we can fix that is if we come into our process and when we click on our process, we click record. And right now you'll see that it says it's using x86 default 64-bit uh, Visual Studio, which is saying, I really think that this is SIGWIN on Windows X64. Not really the case. We're gonna uncheck that box that says show recommended offers. We're gonna put in x86 to get us all the possible x86 variants. 
And then what we're going to do is rather than picking the Visual Studio one or the Windows one, we're going to pick GCC. And I'm picking 64-bit because I have a 64-bit executable. It's a 32-bit executable, 2-bit instead. But this should help us get where it is um, we'd like to be. So we'll click that. And we'll notice now that all of a sudden, we now have a thread for our process that exists. It's stopped at some place that it doesn't really quite know what's going on. Um, but it did stop, it did load memory here. Um, and so what we can now do at this point is we can actually do a single step. And that will cause um, basically the, the system to step one instruction. And when we did that, now we've got, we've got modules that are loaded. They're not loaded at the right addresses yet, but we do have them loaded. It did execute, it did do a jump. It got us at least started to where we want to be. Um, we also have, you'll notice that there's no breakpoints right now inside of Ghidra, nothing there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna do a break at main um, for this one. And you'll see that right away that I did that, we now have a synchronized breakpoint um, in Ghidra. It's not 100% correct yet, right? So it's right with respect to where it is in the executable because um, it broke at uh, almost the right spot. Right? So 68, so break right there roughly. So it broke at one of the first spots that it could um, with respect to that. Uh, but we also now have that up here in our breakpoint. Um, our modules are still not loaded at the right address yet. So we're gonna uh, run to our breakpoint. And when we run to our breakpoint, we see that we get stopped. We stop at our breakpoint where we'd expect to, to be. Um, we can now come in, we can see registers that are available to us. Um, our stack PC is down here, kind of right where we would expect it to be. And now we can step each instruction as we would really like it to. Um, we're still not, we still don't have the modules that are in the right spot here, but we can use this um, trying to map our current trace. Uh, with identical addresses. So if we click that, um, that should have helped us. It doesn't seem like it did this time. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this thing run. It's gonna run its course, it's gonna exit out. All of our modules go away, our breakpoints are gone, um, and our interpreter says everybody exited uh, success. So now what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna basically do this exact same thing. We're gonna run it again. Right, and so that gives us our nice break at main. So instantly we broke at main. We still got the same error back in Ghidra, so we still have to go fix our trace um, when we do that. Uh, so we'll fix 64 bit again. Once we fixed our trace, our memory gets back to where it is we expect it to be. Our breakpoint still got loaded where we wanted. Our modules, though, now our modules are actually loaded at the right spot, and I believe that's because when we executed it a second time, we actually got more information back from GDB. Um, so that we could we could get that figured out. Now that we've got that, we can come over here. We can actually tell it to map and synchronize addresses appropriately, um, which it should have done. And you can see where now, previously we were just kind of moving around. Now we're actually stopped where we would expect to be stopped within the, the actual program, right? We can see the program cursor. We step it. Um, the program cursor is mapping up here now uh, in the dynamic. Uh, analysis portion with as well where our program cursor is listed here. So if we come down maybe a little bit and we put another breakpoint here, set a execute breakpoint, start that there. Our breakpoint did get set. You can see that our other breakpoint got set. If we come back to our interpreter here and we ask for info on breakpoints, um, we can see that now those breakpoints are available to us and we can run this to the next breakpoint, which our cursor ran all the way to the next breakpoint. Everything is now appropriately synchronized. We can click this again. Um, but the, the really nice thing is now if, for example, this was a call off to maybe one of these um, DLLs or something else like that, we could actually start importing those from a file system. We could start doing the other niceties that we couldn't necessarily do before um, because we were just kind of stuck in GDB and we didn't really have that reference. So that is kind of how we get there. It's basically this tiny fix um, sort of thing with specifying how it is we want to do the recording and getting that information set up the right way. Um, so with that, what we're going to do one more time, just because we can, is we're going to let the let it continue to run. It'll finish running. It'll exit. All of our breakpoints will go away. 
Um, we're going to come back in here and we're going to do one last thing. We're going to set our arcs uh, on this because I want to show you guys what happens if we actually have a stack overflow on this. And so we'll put in a series of A's and easy. a really massive argument uh, to this so that we will crush, hopefully, that little uh, 64 that was in, right? So our break point is still at main. Um, we're going to click uh, our backtrace, right? So we're not actually uh, running yet. So now we're going to run this again. We got our break point. We got to come in. We got to fix up our recording so that uh, we're actually doing the right GCC, 64-bit. Don't click 32-bit, it will break you, which is why I had to redo this several times. So we'll click that, we'll get everything synchronized, we'll do a single step to basically get us um, connected where it is we, we expect to be. We'll do one last thing, which is to, to sort of synchronize our positions and our debugger. Um, and now when we start stepping through this, right, we're going to step over these. We're going to call into our main function. You see now that we're actually tracking along with our decompiled functions that were inside of Ghidra, which is spectacular. Um, so now we're going to do that first part. We're going to set our set here. Probably should have broken on copy. Dead. But we'll do our mem set. Um, do that. Let's come back here to our sure copy. And actually, let's set another breakpoint there because we can. Execute. We will run off until that one, right? So we've run. We've hit our mem set. We're going to continue on. We're now at our string copy. We're going to step over our string copy, uh, and and right now let's take a look before we do that. Let's take a look at the registers, right? So all of our registers look good, legitimate. We've got our stack down here. Um, if we wanted to, we could pull that up somewhere else and start inspecting it. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll do a single step over the string copy. And once we did that one over the string copy, now we're going to start seeing our registers here start getting a little bit more messed up. We've got our first one right here. Look, our AX is all messed up. Um, and now as we continually step over these sorts of things, we're going to have our printf, which is our last printf that's actually useful. And we'll run that forwards, and then we'll see that eventually we came back out when we popped off uh, RBP, we popped off just a pile of A's into RBP, and now we're attempting to return uh, to that, and, and we're, we're never going to actually get there. So the program's crashed, um, so now we can start tracing that along inside. So I hope that that's been helpful for you. I know that this is not necessarily the best way, I think, to do this. I think, ideally, uh, you wouldn't get any errors when you start up. You wouldn't have any problems with GDB connecting. Um, However, we're not there yet, it doesn't look like. So if you happen to have any suggestions on how to make this better or you know how to get around these defects, please let me know. I would love to know how to, uh, how to get around them and make my life just a little bit easier. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I hope it helps you out.